Alexander, good to see you turning your video on. So please tell me Hello. what uh, Telefonica and DeepSight have been doing in this space. Yes, actually, we, we are all collaborating in a, in a research lab in Madrid uh, named 5Tonic. So in there, we have a 5G SA core network. And uh, we have been working on use cases where we are doing a tight uh, integration between the edge and, and the 5G uh, SA core network. So I think um, here we, we see some of the slides. So, so I don't know if you, we see the partners so of Aftonix Labs. So I let my colleagues from, from DeepSight do a, a brief introduction first. Yeah, yeah sure, uh, sure, uh, Alex. Uh, thanks, thanks, Richard. Um, uh, so uh, I think uh, the first slide, uh, what you're seeing is uh, uh, this use case, uh, you know, video analytics is something we all know it's uh, quite bandwidth, high bandwidth is needed, you know, latency is not at all compromised because it has to be in high speed. And till 4G, you know, like we have been doing a lot of video analytics from last two years, but you know, on the 4G network, there's always been uh, certain challenges, right? So IoT has taken a huge, uh, you know, uh, benefit from 4G, uh, whereas video analytics is in the nascent stage of going into cloud or going into edge. It's, it's becoming to more reality now. Uh, in this regard, uh, I like, uh, you know, Alex mentioned in partnership with uh, Phytonic, uh, Telefonica, Ericsson, et cetera, uh, we uh, made this use case to test and understand, you know, what is the threshold? You know, what can happen when videos are sent over 5G and at certain conditions and certain use cases. So this was happened in uh, Spain lab uh, and for the duration of around three months, uh, thanks to our partners and uh, especially Phytonic, uh, which helped us to enable this. Uh, so I think we will talk about this use case uh, in more detail. Uh, I think Nishant, can you please uh, provide a flow of this use case? And then I think Alex and Jorge, please uh, take over for uh, the explanation. Uh, any questions, please do ask us. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Rakesh. So before moving to the actual use case, I, th I just want to tell you some common thing. Uh, first of all, we have discussed a lot about uh, the advantage of MEC, advantage of 5G. Uh, the lower latency, higher bandwidth, uh, more secured communication. <clears throat> but I am just uh, going to talk about the, uh, the advantages of application which is going to consume this much high bandwidth and uh, low, lower latency communications. <clears throat> so the, the application required to, the, like Kumskum has touched some point where there should be a distributed approach in terms of deploying the main high computation part at the network edge and <clears throat> whatever the saving part that could be on the cloud side and these things. So we have done, we have built in this application where it has power to consume thousands of camera in the real time and add n number of feature in real time to process the things and uh, raise the alerts actually. So moving to the next, uh, the actual use case which we have done. So this is the in collaboration with the Telefonica as an operator, Ericsson as a core network provider, and uh, Ultra Cap Gemini as a MEC provider. We have onboarded our application on the uh, network uh, multi-access uh, access edge computing platform, where all the data is like the data from the <coughs> actual CCTV camera is coming over the 5G router via on the tower side, and there we are. Uh, uh, we are we have onboarded our application and we have demanded our the quality of service uh, requirement on the MEC and MEC is talking to the 5G network in order to provide uh, those quality of service to our application and then based on that we use alerts. So important point here is that here because the edge multi access computing is accessible because it's more secure uh, communication. So primarily it should be accessed via the operator uh, zone. The like operator, uh, operator uh, customers can access uh, this particular zone. So th those things are completely, uh, they are getting it actually. So this is what, uh, <clears throat> so on the top of it, this is what we have done it. As soon as we detect something, we raise alerts and we send it to the common cloud server. So this is how it is done, uh, this particular use case. So we, the facial recognition, human intrusion part is being done on this. So over to, uh, I think, 
the next slide. Yeah, go to Alex and uh, Jogi, please. Yeah, Alex and George. Yeah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> sorry, in Telefonica, we we are keen to to explore with the rest of the industry uh, um, this concept of uh, making more than distribution of data centers for the age. So actually, with a lot of industry players, we are collaborating in the GSMA for this uh, operator platform concept. Uh, Jorge is going to describe to you. He's a chief architect for all this, this concept in terms of platform and, and the trial. But uh, in a nutshell, as an introduction, we really want to make full usage of the network for the edge. And for that, we need somehow to, to integrate what is the edge as a platform layer with the rest of the network. And uh, we, we have been pushing for this in the standards. Um, there are many, many players involved in the GSMA uh, in this definition. And then we took this reference kind of concept and tried to build it in, in the Five Tonic Lab for the, for the deep side use case. So Jorge, maybe you want to give some view, technical view on, on, on the concept. Yeah, thank you, Alex. So we're starting uh, with this initiative in GSMA. As Alex mentioned, uh, Operator Platform Group is a uh, different uh, network providers, um, network operators group, uh, joined by more than 35 operators, more than 20 providers that wanted to enhance or to provide a definition of the end-to-end -end of an edge delivery service. Because at the end, we don't want to have only this distributed cloud, as Alex was mentioning, but we also want to take advantage of the different capabilities that our network provides. Uh, that is why we have this complete architecture here, starting with the application providers, the developers that can deploy the application, can deploy and can define the different criteria that this application needs to uh, follow in the architecture through the Norbound interface, the interface connecting the developers. And then we have the different interfaces connecting to the resources. Of course, we have an interface connecting to the cloud resources because we are going to deploy application in the cloud environments that we have, but we also want to engage with the network we also want to request for different capabilities on the network, take advantage of the authentication that they do with the devices, take advantage of the quality of service, the, rel the reliability. We need to have this kind of different interfaces with the network also, with the 5G core in this case, as we will see later, but with any other network. We also proposed uh, to have a East Westbound interface, a federation interface uh, that allows at the end many operators to join the force together and allow one developer to deploy one and have the application deployed uh, all over the world, just away from the country that he's connected to, to the proper operator, to other, all the operators that are part of this country and also abroad, of course. Uh, this is what we call the roaming of the applications so that the applications are deployed everywhere, just deploying once. But we also want to enable the roaming of the users, the same as we have a roaming for the voice, we can or, or we want also to have the roaming for the edge service. And finally, we have a specific interface so that the final devices, the agents that are on your mobile device uh, that wants to connect to a edge application uh, can communicate with this platform, can request the service, can authenticate also itself, and we can also manage the mobility of these devices along the country and abroad also. So if we go to the next slide, please, Nishant. Uh, yeah, here we just want to remark what, uh, what we have deployed for this specific proof of concept with deep side uh, video processing applications. Uh, just starting with the pieces, we have the MEC platform from Catgemini from Altran managing the end to end service as we have presented before in this operator platform, following the standard, of course. We have the Edison 5G core network managing the connection of the devices. And we have these devices, this surveillance camera, and the edge video processing application deployed on the edge. So starting with the base, with the basic service uh, that everybody understands at the edge, at the edge, which is deploying the application close together with the devices. We do this, placing the servers close together with the UPF, which is the 5G network element, managing the connection of the device. This is the shortest path that we can take for the connection of the device. But we also wanted to make more things. We want to have a complete edge service. That is why we have these additional interfaces, starting, for instance, with the UNI, the connection from the cameras to the Mac platform that can manage the connection, can allow this camera to discover which servers they need to connect to. But we also have additional interfaces, starting again with the Norman interface so that the developers can easily, in this case, DeepSight, can easily deploy the application. And we also have this advanced interface network connection to the NEF. The NEF is the gateway of the 5G core network, the standard one that provide access to external parties 
to request capabilities to the 5G network core so that we can securely provide these capabilities from the operator to external parties that want to have these capabilities. Um, in this case, we have tested some of them. Of course, there are a lot of much more capabilities, but we have focused on providing different information about the devices uh, for instance, the location. We can provide a trusted location of the device information to this external application. Uh, we have also tested the guaranteed quality of service so that in this case, this side can request so that the connection of this surveillance camera are always treated in the best possible uh, fashion. So that uh, of, independently on the situation of the network, independently that the network, the radio core or the radio network is overloaded, the connection of these cameras for this application is always treated with the most optimal quality of service. Uh, we also have some capabilities for modifying the charging policies uh, that we have on the network. So that for instance, in this case, DeepSight can charge the connection of these devices instead of the proper owner of the connection of these devices. And finally, we have a much more advanced uh, use case, which is the optimization of the network routing of this edge application, so that we can predict the movement in case this camera has uh, mobility. Uh, we can ensure that the traffic is always routed in the most optimal way, independently of the location of the application, when we need to change the link just because it is overloaded or whatever, we can always optimize this routing of the application. So, uh, our intention with this is just remark which are the capabilities of the network that we can provide to the edge service so that it is not only an edge service. It is, it is not only a distributed cloud service. This is a complete telco edge service that can evolve to something that the application may consume in this feature. So, so I think here the main comment is that the 5G network has really been built for edge. Okay, all these capabilities are standard capabilities that um, all operators can 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 look at and, and deploy, and and it has really been so to do this uh, tight integration and enhance uh, the application experience uh, with the edge. So that's the great thing about the five G network. So here, one more <clears throat> one thing I want to add here, along with the alert, the intelligent uh, deep side is going to send the intelligent alert by integrating, taking the information of five G like the location information of the. Uh, mobility because it's a mobility the camera is moving so more look um, <clears throat> mobility information of that particular cell so along with the alert we can send the mobility information on which tower it is so it is also has a tight packed integration with this whatever the cell information is there along with the alerts and each what movement is there so this is what we have done achieved together yeah i mean the the 5g core network is is totally api based so so Asking for this information is just doing this API integration between the gateway of the core network on the application and, and its location, but not much more information could even uh, be being requested and bound to, to the application. So, so again, it's, it's quite a, a useful capability of the 5G core that can be can can enhance the edge um, experience. Thank you kindly. Indeed, for, for me, that, 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 that's what 5G, AI, IoT, the fusion of coming together is all about. It, it, it's surfacing those new capabilities. Um, in, indeed, thanks very much for, uh, for that, that, that run through of, uh, of the five tonic mech standalone integration. Uh, I look forward to seeing very similar proposals in the smart networks and services um, calls that are, that, that are coming up late, later in the year. Um, Ian, th thanks very much. Okay, if you could stop sharing uh, now, we're we're coming into the uh, oh, I think we're in the, in in the final 10, 10 minutes of. Uh, so thanks. I mean, the the takeaway I get from this is these are powerful capabilities that that, that are being surfaced. There is almost unlimited flexibility in the way that you can ar architect it. Um, so uh, to pick up again on a question <laughs> that Dean raised right at the start, if it's so brilliant, why aren't we falling over it all the time? Could I ask you briefly, you know, what's, what, what, what's the easiest thing to do here? Where, where, where have you had the most success? Uh, and what's the hard thing? What, what, what are the things that can push this forward? What, 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 what's the one thing that's holding it back? In, in no particular order, on your marks, get set, go. Uh, maybe if I just come in, uh, Richard, <clears throat> I mean, no one, 
I've said this in many other things. No one ever comes into one of our stores and say, "Hey, we want Edge Compute, right?" It's it should be invisible. Um, if you watch The Mandalorian, if you watch The Mandalorian on Disney Plus on BT or EE, you are using Edge Compute to watch it. Um, it's there, and we're delivering content um, today. Um, if you are, <clears throat> um, if you're playing uh, um, a number of video games right now, both streamed and direct, you're using Edge Compute. Uh, in many cases, if you're using a mobile network, you're using Edge Compute. So I think, um, you know, it is out there. I think what where the lag is, and I think definitely COVID's impacted this, is is getting the developer community. Um, up and running and, and their ability to understand the benefits and opportunities from this. And, but, uh, but I'm absolutely convinced that's just, just a, a timing issue and, and, and it will come. Uh, yeah, I'd agree with Neil there. I think we probably are falling over it all day every day without realizing those are specific edge compute examples. Like say, every time we watch Netflix, everyone's watching Tiger King at the start of lockdown. So that's being delivered from a, say a local BT exchange or data center rather than going um, out to Netflix. I think in, in terms of cities and applications that we see, again, it's kind of always been there. I think we're seeing um, the maturity increase. So we are um, now working with better quality imagery so we can do more analysis on it. Um, the compute and level of compute that we can do at the edge um, practically is now far in advance of what it was. So again, that that's kind of moved us on a little bit. I think to answer your other question, the technology is normally the easy part. I mean, I know everyone's talked about some really complex software orchest orchestration of networks, but that's normally the easy part. And um, the kind of how as businesses and how as industries we embrace that and embed it and change our processes and systems and and we have work and is normally the hard part so we've been able to deliver a lot of these things and kind of every every one of the telcos who are on the call will straight away say well we can deliver a lot of this service over an existing 4g network and um, and we are only just starting to see the um the kind of public acceptance or even within cities and councils, we are only starting to embrace smart cities and the use of data to do real-time changes on cities. And, and I think as we kind of, as things progress, you'll start to see certainly things that can only be done by 5G. But I think we're just almost a little bit on that adoption curve still. And we will only see that to go up as people become more and more comfortable with the technology and basing their decisions on real-time data and things like that. So <clears throat> I think operators should play a big role because the operator is directly connected to the consumers. So in order to um, realize at the consumer level buying this, such kind of applications, operator needs to package back to back with the MEC application uh, provider who is onboarding their solution on MEC. The, like there are a lot of MEC companies are coming at AWS as a web platform. So operator is going to be a, play a big role in order to connect to realize this thing to the consumer level because the back to back uh, partnership should be there and package and ultimately video analytic solution should be delivered to the customer actually on the MEC zone. That is what I feel I actually. Richard, I'll bring it back to the point I've made continuously, which is it all comes back to that. What is the outcome? And even to, it doesn't matter if it's an industry outcome or a consumer outcome. And the needle's point, <clears throat> it's build it and they've overcome. We're, we're in a chicken and egg scenario at the minute. The developer community, we really need them on board to say, ah, okay, so I've got the latency and capacity benefit of 5G and actually edge compute is something that I can take advantage of. And therefore I'll begin to build these applications that can consume that. And when they do that, it will be a time when we can walk into football stadiums and you know, and leverage our phones to use some great mech edge compute to get real time in game analytics or you know, the use cases start to really explode. As consumers, 
we probably don't realize we're benefiting. You know, I, I, that's the first time I'm hearing from Neil that we're using Edge for the Mandalorian. I've watched it all back to back. So there, you know, it's it's a great, it, you know, I didn't know it was invisible, but actually what we'll see is much more adoption when the developer community comes on board and starts taking advantage of the capability the network operators have had to invest a lot of money into. So we're, we're, we're at this early adoption stage and it will be great to see that on the journey. Indeed, yeah, we we sort of focused on the sort of video and AI, but yeah, con content distribution. Uh, in, there, there was a beautiful example, uh, uh, a fellow a football fan with massively impaired sight, it's fair to say, but by use of sort of UHD camera mech and sort of blowing up a very small number of pixels large, he was able to see, effectively see a football game for the first time in his life. And it was yeah, literally one of those scales falling from his eyes. And, and I, I thought it was, it's, it's kind of trivial, but a, a brilliant example of, of, of what this tech can, can do that is meaningful mm -hmm. in, in a human contest. Rakesh, sir, you have your hand up. Yeah, yeah, Joe. So, Richard, there are a couple of questions. I don't know if we are uh, uh, looking at that. Uh, just to, uh, the first question is uh, like, if mobile edge computing is such a great idea, why haven't we had fixed edge computing for 10 plus years? Given most enterprise use cases today, camera screens, automation systems are wired. So I think this was one of the question uh, that was, uh, I mean, Dean, Dean has mentioned. So just to add, I, I would uh, request others to please add your views. Uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, certain technologies like every technologies needs uh, supporting uh, layers, you know, like when we talk about uh, IoT, we wanted, you know, more, better networks. We wanted, you know, like when it was 3G, we were talking about just, you know, mobile videos. You know, it was, I think, uh, way back uh, in my, um, you know, uh, job in Ericsson, we were talking about 3G for mobile videos, right? And that needed a lot of bandwidth. I'm talking about 2006 and seven. But I think it's not about, you know, I just found, uh, I, I, I don't know how many have heard about IMS, you know, IP multimedia subsystem, which is which was a great thing for IoT, but it never took off. So in the same way, I think uh, for this question, you know, the mobile edge computing, even if it is there or it will be there, it needs many other supporting components. Like in this case, if there's no great applications, uh, like I think rightly said by Neil and Paul, uh, you know, Danny, that I don't know what I'm using as an end customer, I don't know what I'm using. I'm just liking to have this great speed, you know, great stuff. But end of the day, uh, as a technology companies like telecom companies, infrastructure companies, or AI companies like us, we need to come together and create these applications that can work anywhere, right? So that's, I would see, uh, is up happening now. And that's why I think uh, mobile edge computing is gradually going to be picking up much bigger. Uh, I think if Penel wants to add, uh, please do add. I think it was also really expensive in the past. Like yeah, we've kind of seen the kind of single chips and neural engines being has put way more compute power in smaller devices that in the past we would have used whole racks of servers to use. I think equally um, those things always relied on a lot of backhaul. And I think the fabric of networks around places is fundamentally changing in the UK right now. Like, again, if you'd asked me two years ago, as a local authority, would I be looking at putting a point of presence in a national internet exchange? Absolutely not. But that's something that we're actively looking at doing now so that we know that there's a huge influx of fiber networks and 5G networks being built. And actually, can we move our services closer to them by using the same types of edge concepts? And I think we are just seeing kind of a few different things in the industry shift to just make some of them really kind of tangible business cases stack up that they never have done in the past or certainly that's that's kind of where i find it thank you all some fine observations there uh some great wisdom some good case studies some good examples we are i regret to say out of time so may I thank all the, the, the panelists and presenters for, for sharing their knowledge. Can I thank all of you for coming along and, and, and learning and participating in this? 
Um, I feel sure that Aurora will be following up with uh, some, some sort of feedback survey. And given the subject and where we are in the evolution and deployment of this, I'm sure we'll be back before long to consider some of the uh, other transformational aspects of 5G and associated technologies. Thanks very much for coming. See Thank you soon. You so Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.